Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to discuss one of the most difficult parts about losing someone, and that is going through their home. At some point, there's going to be a moment when either you alone or with your family are going to go through their home to start going through things and get it ready to either sell, rent, or have one of your family members move into it or look it over before it's going to get foreclosed. I will tell you from experience, I thought this was going to maybe be a week and hopefully like what I saw over a TV show, maybe a weekend. But that was absolutely wrong. If they have lived a life there, it is going to take potentially two weeks or longer. For me, it was three weeks and I lived at my mother's place while working during the day, going through things at night and over the weekends, besides having friends of the family and charities come by to take donations, help me put things into containers to be transported elsewhere that I boxed up mostly on my own. In addition, my sister had gone down right after the funeral for a weekend to get things started. Regardless, it is most likely going to take you longer than you initially think, and it will send you into an emotional roller coaster. First, you don't have a lot of time to do everything in one shot after they pass. And as I mentioned in another video, go there initially to clean the refrigerator, possibly the freezer, take out the trash, do the dishes in a once over. This is initially to avoid vermin from breeding and things in the refrigerator decaying on you until you can get back. While there initially, make sure you're able to lock up the place and you're able to take key documents and valuables that might exist in a safe besides any keys that exist in the place so you can secure it until you can come back at another time or until you can continue doing things over the course of the following days. Your next visit or the rest of the stay will now be a challenging one for you because you are now going to be dividing things up into two categories, keep or don't keep. Keep will be those things that will either become inheritance to somebody else or to yourself, something that needs to stay in the family of some kind, or you know of someone that is either a family or friend that may want it. Don't keep will be items that you want to donate to charities you or anyone else you know doesn't have a use for them or things you don't need but have some value so you could sell them and make something back to help pay for things related to the estate. One thing to remember about these things is to check them twice, three times, and maybe a fourth time before you truly get rid of them. There may be regrets later that you should have kept something and now it is gone because it went to the dump or you broke it when you put it into a garbage bag or you gave it to a charity. And you don't want to be that person that has to call up the charity and be like, you know, I really need to get that back. I really shouldn't have taken it. I really shouldn't have given it to you. I would highly recommend making a list of things you want to make sure you find before tackling the keep and don't keep grouping list. This is just to make sure that you have the ability to prioritize things and those things that you are absolutely sure that you should be looking for regardless of anything else. Also, remember at the end of the day, you cannot keep everything unless you have the ability to have, say, two sets of dishware, two couches, two, uh, two media centers, etc. There will be things that will be thrown out and you must be ready for this. And yes, no matter how much you prepare, it will still hit you while you are doing it. I would, re I would, I would recommend making sure that photo albums, pictures, documents are on the list first, and then anything that you think of that is of any sentimental value. And again, remember, you can't keep everything. Personally, I was upset for days when I went through and I threw out a punch bowl because for some reason, I remembered having that punch bowl be used when I was a kid. Remember, if you want to take furniture, there better be room in your place or the other person's place for it, or you're going to be swapping it for other items you already have. Say you take the dining room set, you will probably be throwing out yours or donating yours that you already have. Also, the more you want to keep, the more it will make sense to have movers and containers ship things to your place or other people's places versus you packing them up into a car and then driving them or mailing them to the different locations. Even sentimental items 
you might not be able to keep everything. The reason why the title of this video is called A Tale of Two Houses is really because you literally need to decide what you are willing to have in their place or their homes brought into yours. Because at the end of the day, you can't keep everything because if you keep everything of theirs and yours, you're going to be hoarding and that's not going to look good at the end of the day either. When it comes to their clothes and their shoes, depending on your culture, you might be okay with donating their clothes, but maybe not their shoes because they might need to be destroyed because of your belief that one should not walk in another person's shoes. Again, you need to decide this and whether you want to keep some of their clothes or some of their shoes or donate some or all of it to charity. Charities will often need to be arranged in advance for pickups at the person's home or you will need to drive it over to their storefront. Charities might need days in advance and they also might be picky as well. When it comes to furniture, they might want things in almost in pristine condition where there's little no wear or tear. Some places may even want them already boxed up and will not take anything that is fragile. Remember, at the end of the day, they're going to need to be able to sell them or to be able to give them to someone. You're going to be going through more trash bags and boxes than you think. It is best that you get construction bags so they can handle the weight. For boxes, get medium and large boxes as much as you can, but at the same time, get small packing boxes too, if at all possible, so it's easier for you to lift them, ship them, and pack them up. Also get packing peanuts, bubble wrap, packing tape, and then these foam plate dividers as well as packing paper in some form, quantity. And in order to save on paying full price at the home improvement stores, order some of these things online to get there ahead of, ahead of you. But also remember that if you ship them, they need to fit in the place while you're working besides all the stuff you're going to be going through. And you're most likely going to have to get more packing materials or bags as you continue to work through the place. Now you might be saying about now, well, why don't you just throw money at this and hire movers to help with packing everything? And that is within your right. But you still need to remember that you need to decide what you're, whether you're going to keep it or not keep it. And also remember, do you trust the movers to pack everything up so that it's not damaged? Or do you just want to leave the big things for them while you handle the little things? And also, they're not going to take the time and the care to make sure that everything is perfect, nor are they going to know whether something has sentimental value or not. There could be the possibility that a Chinese fortune cookie means something to you, but it doesn't mean something to them. So you need to be able to watch over them and observe it. So probably the most appropriate thing to do is to do a once over first if you're having someone help you with packing or telling people what to pack and what not to pack. You are going to stop at least a few times when going through things, whether it is looking through photo albums or seeing something that reminds you of them. When this happens, stop and don't push yourself. This might be the first moment you have to start grieving since finding out that they are no longer around. But don't get stuck in the moment forever because after all, you need to get back to your life at some point too and you need to go to work as well and take care of your immediate family. When donating, make sure the places are those places you feel are good places or were places they would have donated to and make sure that you get donation receipts. After all, you or whomever is the executor still have to file final taxes and donations are donations. I will put into the description some places that I have found helpful for selling some medical supplies like diabetes and CPAP items and the name of some charities to think about if you don't know of any of your own. My list will not be everyone, but it will be something to get you started. While going through the place, you will need to decide how much renovation or repairs 
you will want to do before selling, renting, or if it's being foreclosed, nothing at all. Also remember, if it's being sold or being rented, fixing holes in the walls, touching up paint, or miscellaneous repairs might make sense to do, but maybe not everything. You don't have to put a brand new kitchen into the place when you're selling it. Also, if you're planning on renting, you don't have to, you don't have to do everything right away. You can always come back later and make improvements over the time with the rental income. And if you plan or one of your family members plans to move into the place, let them make the decisions or work with them so that they become more accountable and they take on the expense of the improvements to the place for what you or they are going to go to do before they move in or you move in. Remember, while you are there, you will most likely need to go to the county clerk or a lawyer and start the probate process. You will need to work through taking their vehicles back to your place or one of or figuring out how to get their vehicles to the places that are named as beneficiaries for those items so that they are not outside a now vacant home or one that is going to be sold or rented. This means coordinating with a shipping company or you potentially driving cross country in their car so make sure you have the time to do all this. For me, I drove almost two days over a weekend in 10 plus hour clips to get my mother's car to a safer place. I did this alone, but I would recommend if possible to have a friend with you in the car for a road trip, or if you wanna do this by yourself, then use the time to reflect on things because it will probably be another moment where you will have no real distraction to process what has occurred. Depending on how you feel, it might be a little creepy to stay at their place while packing up and you will need to get a hotel. That's perfectly fine. But for me, when it was my mother's place, it, it was like a second home to me. So I didn't think about that. I had built a guest room there for my visits because I was on the road so much for, and I practically lived there for almost a decade. You will need to remember while doing all of this packing, driving, rental cars, hotels, meals, etc. All of these things need to be noted down and be listed as potential expenses to the estate that should be reimbursed to you if possible at some point. Even having to pay for a storage facility to put items in for a short period before they are given out to beneficiaries need to be accounted for. Again, this is not about abusing the estate funds, but all of this can get really expensive and really quickly and can exceed $10,000 or more. If you want to eat the cost of all this, that's fine, but this is all legitimate estate expenses. And if you have any questions about any of it, you can always speak with your CPA, tax attorney, or an accountant, or even look it up on the internet to confirm everything of what I'm now telling you. But keep track of it for later review. Now, I know this is a lot to process, but hopefully this video gives you some insights into this process, and you now have a starting point to think about what it's going to take for you to go through their place and decide on how, what you're going to keep, what you're not, and where things might go. And again, remember, while going through it, there's a good chance you're going to be dumping out, let's say, a dozen or more construction bags worth of items. As always, like, subscribe, and share this video with anyone you feel can benefit from this information. Also, feel free to leave any comments, and I'll try my best to answer them. Depending on what comments are left, I'll, it might mean that I might need to make some additional videos to explain them. So feel free to ask away.